Today we are going to talk about how to do a planting plan for your community garden. We're going to start on our KCCG webpage. So up here you're going to go to kccg.org. When you get to our main page you're going to hover over the resources tab and go down to planting plan. When you get to our planting plan page we have a little bit of information of why it's important to do a planting plan. We believe that it's Great to use one of these to calculate the quantity and variety of vegetables that you'll be growing throughout the spring, summer, and fall. Here in Kansas City, we are lucky to have these three distinct seasons where we can grow different crops throughout each season. To do a planting plan, it allows you to grow more food. You can maximize your garden space and grow food, more food in a smaller area. Stay organized to track when your vegetables are planted and when they should be harvested. To rotate your crops, so you're keeping records of what you planted last year to make sure you're planting it in a different space the next year. And to keep easy records, to use a garden journal to track what went well and what didn't go well. So here we have just easy steps of how to create a planting plan. This is both for users who are not members, KCCG members, and also people who are members. So if you're not a member, you still have all the resources you need on this page to still create your planting plan. So the first step here is to download our planting plan guide sheets. You click on this green button here, and it will give you the starting map here to do your guide sheets. So we start here with our cool and warm season vegetable growing guide. So over here is the column of the vegetables that can be planted in the spring and in the fall. And then on the right is the column that will be planted in the summer. So this is a very helpful starting sheet just to start looking at what you want to grow. We suggest that people start circling the crops that they for sure want to grow that year and even prioritize which ones you definitely want to get into the ground. This is the Kansas City planting calendar, uh, optimal dates for planting for the Kansas City area for each of these varieties. And then here we have a spacing guide. So this is particularly for raised beds uh, where we give recommendations of how far apart to space your crops. And then lastly down here we provide grids for you to start mapping out your garden. So this is really the first step you want to do is map out your garden space to scale on these grid sheets. Uh, this will allow you to really look to see how much space you have to plant in and how much space you want to give each crop. We provide a spring, a summer, and a fall sheet here. Uh, you can make three copies of it so you can really look at your rotations easily on separate grid sheets. So step number two is to evaluate the previous year's garden. If you garden last year, again kind of like what we talked about above, uh, what went well, what didn't go well, you know, don't plant things that you didn't really like. Uh, number three, determine which vegetables you want to grow. So again circling on that cool and warm season guide uh, the vegetables that are a priority for your community garden or your home garden. Make a map that was back to that grid sheet over there. So to here's an example that we have of a six bed community garden. So these are all four by 12 foot beds. So they're all 48 square feet and we've got six beds here. So this is our main copy, what we call our master map here that we leave blank that we can use year to year. And then the next one here is our spring map. So this is where we've filled in what we want to grow. So from using uh, kind of the optimal planting dates and looking at what we want to grow for the spring, we've started to fill this in. So this is all something you're going to do by hand before you even get to the calculator tool. So here we show spring, summer, and so you can see summer's in red here, and so you can see how the spring varieties are interacting with the summer varieties. Some of the spring crops will stay in throughout. And then lastly, fall. So we've got kale and collards still in there from the spring. Our red vegetables here, tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, are still in from the summer. And then we had extra space to plant in here. So these are the same six beds through the spring, summer, and fall. And then lastly, if you are a KCCG member or a community partner garden, you can use our planting calculator that will help uh, output all of the numbers of things that you'll need to uh, plant your garden, the numbers of plants and seeds, mulch, fertilizer, stuff like that. Um, so this is sort of the benefit of using the tool in the end. If you are a member, you do get, at the end of all of this, you'll be getting what's called a 
planting plan. And here it will be a summary of everything that you've entered into the calculator. And it gives you the spring planting and harvest calendar, summer planting and harvest calendar, fall, how much mulch to use on your garden, how much fertilizer recommendation we have. And then lastly, our shopping list. This is especially important for our community partner gardens because it will allow you to more easily fill out the online order form when we send it to you because it will recommend here how many seed packs, how many three packs of plants to get and stuff like that. This is all sort of specific to what we sell at Kansas City Community Gardens. So we're going to get started by clicking on the planting plan calculator. We're going to enter in our membership number, so you'll want to have your Community Partner Garden membership number on hand. Confirm that this is your correct contact information and you want to enter in the email that you would like your planting plan sent to. So here's the planting plan calculator. It's a two-step process. There's the plotting tool and then there's the planting plan calculator. The plotting tool is only used to test out potential crop rotations one bed at a time. This tool right here does not log any of your information. It simply helps determine how many plants will fit in one area and when they can be planted throughout the three seasons. So for example, in my bed number one here from my, uh, let's see, where did this go? From my spring map, I know for sure that I want to do carrots in bed number one. So if I go back to my calculator here, and so I know in spring I want to plant carrots, so I'm going to click carrots up here. It's in a bed. I had just a third of my bed, so that was about a three by four space, so that was 12 square feet. And let's see, today's April 5th, so I'm going to go ahead and click April 5th for the day that I'm planting it. And here it automatically calculates what the end date will be. So this is the date that you're harvesting the crop right there, so that's in July. Uh, the total plants, this really is a seed number here, so you don't need to pay too much attention to this. It will come out on your planting plant and seed pack recommendations. So over here in the summer, I'm like, great, okay, in that first space, I'm going to plant carrots. What can I plant in that same space during the summer? So here, it only gives me a couple of options because this crop is until July. So really, I can keep my carrots in and choose to just, you know, designate the space for the carrots, or there's these three crops that will still do well afterward. So you know what, I'm just going to keep my carrots in, so I'm just going to click leave empty, keep my carrots in, and then fall, I'll open up space again to do another crop. So here, really, what this does is it just is mapping it out. So once I've determined this, this is when I'm going to go back over to my map and fill in carrots in the spring, carrots in the summer, in the same spot up here, and then in the fall, I decide what I want to put last. So here I had broccoli there. So uh, another example of this is, let's say I for sure want to do kale in the spring. I'm going to plant it in a whole bed, so it's going to be 48 square feet. Again, I'm going to plant it today. And here it shows me I'm going to harvest it in November. So really that crop is going to go through and pass that first frost. So when I go over to summer, it's not even going to give me an option of what to plant next, in through fall. When I go over to fall, it's not going to give me an option in through fall because that crop will last that whole thing. So again, this is when I would go back to my map. Back up in the spring, I'll keep kale right here in bed number two. In summer, whoops, in summer, it will still be kale. And in fall, it will still be kale. So that is what this tool is used for, is really to test out your rotations bed by bed so you can... Uh, map out what will be planted afterwards. So if you know you want to do a shorter crop, for example, radishes, I can see here this will be done by middle of May. So I have all of my options here. I'm going to plant my tomatoes in this bed afterward. And then in fall, my tomatoes will be in through fall. So really, I just see this and then I go back to my map and I fill in what works there. This tool, again, is not recording any information at all. Once I have filled out my three spring, summer, and fall maps, that's when I come down here to the planting plan calculator. This is where it's going to record your information, and this is what's going to give you uh, that nice calendar when you're, when you're finished with it. So I'm going to come in here. I decided that I for sure was going to do carrots in a bed. Plot number one. This is an optional thing here. It doesn't actually uh, determine any... Um, 
it won't determine anything on your actual planting planting plan there. So the start date is going to be again today, April 5th. And then it was going to be in 12 square feet. Okay, so great. I'm going to add another one. I know I'm doing kale. And so this is where I'm just actually recording what I've decided on. When I've messed around with my plot to know that this is for sure what I want. On some of these things, we have given the option of plants or seeds. This is if Kansas City Community Gardens offers either the plant or the seed version, the seedling or the seed version of it. Um, so some of these things, if it doesn't give you an option like carrots, for example, we, that will only be a seed pack. Uh, so I'm going to choose plants there. So then I would, from my map up here in the spring, I will then put in every single one of these vegetables, carrots, beets, turnips, cabbage, and keep adding another, adding another, uh, until I'm completed with that. So then I do the same thing for summer. I will add in what I've decided on for all of my summer map here. So squash, cucumbers, tomatoes, and again, keeping track of how much square feet. If you're planting in rows, if you've got more ground plots, you can again put a row and then you'll put in the total linear feet there. So this is what allows you to really track it. So you're going to have a nice long list of your spring, summer, and fall vegetables. When you are finished, especially for our community partner gardens, we ask that you upload those maps. So this version of whatever you drew out, we love to see those. We love to see what you're planning. That's helpful for our records too. And then you're going to upload that and then go to next page. So here, this is nice. It will not let you actually complete your form until it's all filled out. So again, this is my just my estimation here. And I'm just giving you an example here. So it's going to confirm your submission. Uh, this is in place too because if you press enter at any time back on this previous page, it's going to try to submit it for you. So this gives you just an extra uh, step here to make sure you wanted to actually confirm it. And then at any point, if you're not quite sure, you wanted to talk this over with your guard, other people in your garden, you can save your progress and resume later. It'll ask you to create a password. So then I'll press submit. It will confirm that my planting plan was submitted. Uh, for individuals doing this, you'll get an automatic email right away. For community partner gardens, it will take about a day or two to confirm this and send it back over to you. And that's when you will receive, again, this nice completed planting plan document, as well as a detailed calendar for each of the seasons. Thank you for watching, and let us know if you have any questions. You can email us at cpg at kccg.org. Thank you.